Foot long, five bucks. Maybe bagel. Maybe Brunswick Park, somebody sells hot dogs, one dollar. Hot dog on a bun. I don't know how much is cold water. Not so much for that. So, would you agree that, G, that the, the loaves of bread and the fish came from the poor people? Yes? I'm giving you a, 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 a totally different perspective of this gospel now. When, when we look at the poor people, our thinking is from us to the poor person. Do you agree? In other words, we help the poor. We give to the poor. How about changing our perspective and making it we and the poor help each other? Does that make sense? Look how Jesus did it. Jesus didn't ask the apostles to go by and give to the poor. You know what Jesus did? He took the fish and the loaves of bread from a poor boy. In other words, he used the very same things that came from the poor to help the poor. We can help the poor not just dole out, giving them a dollar, giving them a quarter. Remember in high school we learned, even the Bible, Sometimes just plain giving doesn't help, right? Sometimes. Plain giving doesn't help. Sometimes it makes people lazy. Oh, it's okay. You pass by and give me again. <clears throat> I will not give you, I will not give you a dollar. I will show you how to make your own dollar. How's that? And that's what Jesus did here. Get from the poor something, some talent, some treasure. That's treasure. Must have been a very good boy. This is my lunch. Why are you taking my lunch? Don't worry. I take from the poor, Jesus says. He took from the poor and multiplied it and gave back to the poor. Sounds different now, right? And especially when we move to this. Again, the question why would this gospel reading be three times during this week? Monday, Tuesday, and next Sunday. This is from the book of Matthew. This is about healing. This is about recognizing who Jesus truly is. And this is how you follow Jesus. And this shows who Jesus really is. You see the relationship now? This shows you who Jesus really is. He's God. This shows you how to be in union with God. He shows you the way. Jesus says, I am the way. This tells you who Jesus really is. Very clearly. And what about this? This is healing. And this is helping the poor. Helping the poor. Healing. Healing. This included uh, Jesus walking on water. Jesus walking on water also proves who really, he really is. Imagine how much St. Peter saw about uh, uh, Jesus. It was Peter who saw transfiguration. It was Peter who saw Jesus walk on water. Even he walked on water for a little bit. 
until he got scared. Until he got scared. The very essence of all this, from last Sunday, yesterday, up to next Sunday, is who Jesus really is. Who Jesus really is? He's God. As best has been said, he is compassionate, he is helpful. One message here, big message from yesterday's gospel is God does not help you by just giving you out. Dole, just dole out. God doesn't help like that. That's why he got these five loaves of bread and two fish from the poor to help the poor. In other words, the message here is what? You gotta have something, right? You have to work. You have a role to play. You have things to do. You can't just sit and wait for God to do everything for you. It's not gonna happen. Isn't that the message here? And here? You must believe. Have faith if you have. Jesus says, your faith has healed your daughter. Your faith has healed your daughter. As humans, if somebody says, no, this is not for you dogs, you probably walk away. Probably. She did what a test. That's the essence of the eight days of gospel. We're being shown that nothing is impossible with God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Nothing is impossible to God. Have you seen anyone walk on water? <laughs> huh? I have. But it's magic. It's illusion. I don't know if you know the name, Chris Angle. He was walking on water and got this woman uh, diving and swimming under him. You can see the woman swimming under him. Then it turned out there's a glass, there's a glass bridge. There's a glass bridge that he steps on. And it's like it's like submerged under the water enough not to be seen as if so you see the person walking on water. But Jesus didn't have that. He really walked on water. So let's go to this. Do you have a question? Any question? See, a boat to a lonely place apart 
That's the way, that's, that's how the Bible says and tells us that he was grieving. He had to be alone. Don't you want to be alone when you're grieving? Sometimes you don't even want to be with your spouse. I have to be alone by myself. I'm grieving. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. The image I'm trying to portray here is this. A grieving man who wanted to be alone saw a vast crowd that needed help and he wanted to help them. Can you visualize that image? That's one vision of Jesus I share with you today. Isn't that beautiful? A grieving Jesus he was crying. Remember Jesus wept. Right? That was one time. Lazarus, of course, was another one. But Jesus was grieving upon the death of John the Baptist. And when, but when he saw people, he was ready to help. He was willing to help. Which reminds me, sometimes you hear people, real Christians, their children have been killed, they've been raped, kid, uh, uh, kidnapped and killed, they've been victimized by, <clears throat> they've been subject to horrendous crimes by some people, and then they go to public, they go, go public and pronounce that they forgive the person. They're grieving, and they, they, time, they take time to do that. Jesus was grieving, and he wanted to help. Make yourself notes what this image is, okay? <clears throat> when, <clears throat> as human beings, what do you see? You know, yesterday I was in Atlantic City. I didn't gamble. <laughs> I didn't even... I, the only time I entered the casino was to get some relief from the heat. Because it was cold inside. What is your natural tendency when you see someone on the, side of, on the, on the sidewalk you're walking on begging? What is your tendency? Move to the other side. Just don't even look at this person, right? Don't even look. Am I making sense to you? Do you sometimes feel that way? You don't even want to see those, right? You know what happened? Why is this here? The issue that was evaded? Philip and the disciples said, let's send them home. We don't want to see them go hungry. We don't want to see them without food to eat. And it's time to eat. So let's send them away. Sounds familiar? Let's send these poor people away. We don't want to see hungry people in need. That's the issue that's evaded. Either let them go away or we go away. You move to the other side. Remember the Good Samaritan? The priests and the Levites came, and this poor victim was left for dead, just, just, just ignored, and they went to the other side and walked, and walked away. Can you blame them? Can you blame those priests and Levites? Probably not. They didn't cause the man harm. They had nothing to do with what happened to the man. Or maybe they have a doctor's appointment. Maybe they have work to go to. Who knows? You understand? You understand the issue that's evaded in this gospel account? 